The system automatically determines costing levels when you create a cost estimate. Assigning materials to costing levels ensures that the system performs costing in the correct sequence, raw materials and purchased parts, followed by semi-finished products, followed by finished products. The BOM header contains information that applies to all items in the BOM. The BOM must be valid for costing for the BOM to be read for a cost estimate. The following fields in the BOM header are relevant to costing. BOM usage, for example, BOMs in use exclusively for engineering or costing purposes. BOM status, you can use the BOM status to control what the BOM can be used for in various other organizational areas, for example, engineering, costing, and MRP. Alternative BOM. Alternative BOMs describe different product structures that create a product with the same properties. For example, in BOM A, the product uses sheet metal A, while in BOM B, the same product uses sheet metal B. The resulting product is the same. Lot size range. A BOM can be defined as valid for only a limited range of lot sizes. For example, 1 to 1000 units. You can then create an alternative BOM for lot sizes exceeding 1000 units. The following fields are relevant for the BOM items. Item category. This categorization allows you to process data that is relevant to the individual items in a BOM. The item category is used to control field selection, default values for BOM maintenance, triggering of specific system activities, and so on. Some examples of item categories are as follows. Category L indicates a stock item, valuation in accordance with material valuation strategy or separate cost estimate. Category N is a non-stock item. Category R is a variable size item, valuation in accordance with material valuation strategy or separate cost estimate. Fixed quantity indicator. Setting this indicator shows that the component quantity is always the same regardless of lot size. It applies mainly to unavoidable material loss at the start of the production process. Fixed quantity is not allowed for the following items. Alternative items, cool products, planned scrap. Planned scrap is used in material requirements planning or MRP to determine the quantities of materials required. When exploding the bill of material or BOM, the system increases the required quantities of the components by the calculated scrap quantity. For example, if you set a planned scrap value of 4% and the BOM requires 100 pieces of a component, the system will calculate that 104 pieces will be required for the assembly. Relevancy to costing indicator. If you do not select this indicator, the system ignores the BOM item in the material cost estimate. For standard cost estimates, modified standard cost estimates and current cost estimates, you only need to decide whether or not the item will be costed. For inventory costing, you can link relevancy to costing indicators to factors for the fixed and variable costs so that the item values can be adjusted by the system depending on the valuation variant used in costing. You do this in customizing for product cost controlling. For example, a BOM item or operation has the indicator for relevancy to costing A, which you have clicked in customizing for product cost controlling to a fixed factor of 0.8 and a variable factor of 0.7. The BOM item or operation will be costed in inventory costing at 80% of the fixed costs and 70% of the variable costs. The settings in the BOM usage and BOM item categories enable you to specify whether this field has a default value and whether you can change this value when you maintain the BOM. Bulk material. You usually post bulk material as consumption at production cost centers as soon as it is procured. 
because it is usually posted, the cost estimate in the standard system does not include the bulk material. A user exit is available if you need to cost bulk materials. Non-stock materials are materials that are not kept in inventory. You always procure them externally and assign them directly to the order. Non-stock materials have either no material master or are maintained with a non-stock material master for the entry tool. For non-stock materials without a material master, you enter the data that is relevant to costing directly in the BOM item. For non-stock materials with a material master, you cannot manually change the prices. The material is valuated in accordance with the strategy specified in the costing variant. The price shown in the BOM might not be the same as the price in the cost estimate that you select depending on the valuation strategy. A routing describes a sequence of production steps. It is one of the factors determining production costs. A routing consists of one or more operations. Each operation contains information about the work center, production resources and tools, material assignments, operation texts, and standard values, how long, how much. You can use rate routings and recipes for repetitive manufacturing and process manufacturing. The routing header has the following settings that are different from those of the BOM header. Assignment of materials. A routing can contain multiple materials that utilize the same production process. Usage. You use task list usage to assign routings to various work areas. This way, you can create several routings to produce one plant material. These routings are differentiated in your task list usage. Routing status. You use the status to indicate the processing stage of a plan. For example, you can indicate whether a plan is still at the creation stage or whether you have already released it. The control key indicates if an operation is relevant to costing. If the control key assigned indicates that the operation is relevant to costing, you can use the relevancy to costing indicator to override the control key. You can overwrite the standard values of the work center in the routing. By deselecting the reference indicator in the work center, you can assign activity types and business process. Linking the standard times with the activity types is done by using the formulas in the work center. The process industry uses a master recipe instead of a routing. The production version in the material master defines a fixed and unique link between an alternative of the recipe group and an alternative of a multiple BOM. You can include the master recipe in customizing for the quantity structure control in order to access the recipe in the cost estimate. However, this can be overridden for materials in the material master or for costing in the costing request screen. You can use work centers in plans such as routings, networks, inspection plans, maintenance task lists, and rough cut planning profiles. You define work centers with reference to a plant. You assign work centers to cost centers. You can adapt routing or work center to production or assembly, scheduling, capacity planning, and costing. They are used as basic data by many applications. Work center category. The work center category determines which data you can maintain in the work center and which values are proposed. Standard value key. 
The standard value key determines how many default values you can maintain, maximum of six, and assigns a meaning such as setup time, machine time, or labor time, and a dimension such as minutes to the standard values. Standard values are used in formulas to calculate the execution time, the capacity requirements, and the production costs. Efficiency rate. The performance efficiency rate is the relationship between the predefined target time and the actual time. You can use the efficiency rate key in costing to correct the default values. You can define default values for the routing or master recipe in the work center or resource respectively. If you assign an operation in the routing or a phase in the master recipe to this work center or resource, then these default values are transferred to the operation or phase. The following default values are relevant to costing. Control key. The control key specifies the following, whether the operation or the phase are included in the costing, whether the operation or the phase are processed internally or externally, whether they are confirmed and in what form. Reference indicator. Setting this indicator prevents the control key from being changed in the routing. The activity type classifies the activities that one or several cost centers need to perform within a company. If a cost center provides activities for other cost centers, orders, processes, or similar resources of this cost center are being used by other cost centers. The costs of these resources need to be allocated to the receivers of the activity. Activity types serve as tracing factors for this cost allocation. In an internal activity allocation, you enter the quantity of the activity, for example, the number of consulting hours into the SAP ERP application manually or automatically. The system calculates the associated cost based on the activity price and generates a debit to the receiver and a credit to the sender for both the quantity and the costs. The internal activity allocation is carried out using secondary cost elements which you enter in the activity type master data. You can restrict the use of the activity type to certain types of cost centers by entering the allowed cost center categories in the activity type master record. You can enter up to eight allowed cost center categories or leave the assignments unrestricted by entering an asterisk. The activity type category is used to determine whether and how an activity type is recorded and allocated. For example, you can allow some activities to be allocated directly, but specify for others that they are either not allocated or allocated only indirectly. To enable internal activity allocation, you need to specify which cost centers provide which activity types at what price. You do this in the SAP ERP application by planning the activity output and prices for a cost center. To enable this, the SAP ERP application provides a number of options. For direct activity allocation, you enter the quantity of the activity to be allocated manually. In order for you to perform a cost allocation and an activity allocation, the SAP ERP application has to evaluate the allocated activity amount using the sender's price for this activity type. For a direct activity allocation, you can use the planned price for the cost center and activity type combination. You can enter the planned price either manually or let the system calculate it automatically within planning. To manually set the price, you must set the plan price indicator in the activity type master record to the value 3, manual entry indirect allocation. You can use this procedure if your price calculation is not complex. For example, it depends on the price.